Okay. Uh, just doing a quick video blog, and I like to do these occasionally to just get things off my chest and talk uh, about many things that uh, I'm working on and maybe articles to come and so on and it does wind me up personally I don't know what my viewers think they're sitting patiently for another video but for me I want to keep putting out content but I can't force it either there's videos I do want to do on the BMI that's a brain machine interface technology um, look up Neuralink and all that um, some gripes and moans this week as well the arrogance and ignorance of ill-informed individuals despite the fact that they could be lovely individuals but they're so ill-informed they're so dumbed down on so many things like coronavirus state oh it's just a heavy cold don't worry about it And another person within the same group arguing that, oh, they've got the mathematical logarithm to predict how it's going, and they place these areas where it pre prediction uh, who's going to get it and so on. No, what you're looking at is factual, um, as in they report the cases, then they give you the graph and chart. It's not a mathematical prediction logarithm, although some of them are probably out there. Thankfully, it does seem like uh, this has reached a level where it's petering off a bit. Um, it's not so, such a peak, and the, the survival rate is very high against the death rate. But people who think it's just a heavy cold, the attitude, that's why something like this would spread as well. One of the reasons why is they're not doing it, their due diligence. You know, I'm trying to stay clean, I was washing my hands and so on. Uh, you can't even get in some stores now because of panic buying, which I don't necessarily agree with. Just keep yourself clean. Um, like hand sanitizer, just basic, you know, Keep your hands clean and watch what you're touching. And, and if it's a bit dirty, it's a, and you know, people worrying about this surviving on surfaces that are not bio biologically supporting it. Right, really. Um, it's only yeah, you know, a virus needs biology to propagate and survive. Obviously, right. What a virus does is tries basically to turn your cells into more of. Um, it more of the virus um, <clears throat> it's not a heavy cold I've had two flus one the last one years ago really really took me down it really hit me hard loss of stone within a week I can remember trying to eat something I think my body was generally so busy trying to fight the virus off that it was like fuck are well, you giving me more work to do and I digest this and I, you know as soon as I swallowed I threw it back up okay I was able to, to keep down some fluids after so many days I was able then to eat a bit of fruit but uh, it really knocked me out uh, about two months more after recovery I was very weak and lethargic and then I was in good health after that. So, flu is basically, you know, somebody you see a, whatever your currency is, let's say a hundred, for me in the UK, it would be a hundred pound check on the, on the grain or something in front of me. You wouldn't be bothered to pick it up. You just could, could not be asked. Uh, or 50 pound note, which would be a $50 note or bill whatever you call it in america as well your whole body every muscle in your body aches with flu and uh heads pounding you your sinuses are blocked all the time and it just takes it saps your energy that's flu it's not oh i've got a heavy cold but um i'll go, go off to work and come home and try and recuperate that's a heavy cold. 
Flu is flu, a cold is a cold. Slam that into your brain cells and realise what the difference is because this ignorance of thinking, oh, it's just a cold, don't worry about it, is the very reason, one of the very reasons why this spreads something like that. It's pathetic, it's arrogant, and it's ill-informed. Um, and the contagiousness of it, of it is fairly bad, but it, I think it would be a true thing to say that it's spread in China because of large dense population that's another one of my pet hates though is people ranting and raving about overpopulation overpopulation doesn't exist what does exist is overcrowding within the cities particularly just something else that's interesting there's something called a donut effect the donut effect is basically they get overcrowding in the cities and uh, people just want to step away a bit of peace and they go start to go outside the city a little bit and the, the middle of the city starts to die because they're withdrawing all the money away from it and moving out a bit and you get this band you get a ring like the donut effect is what they're calling and you know years ago what started happening was villages started dying um financially and things to do i grew up in a small country village myself and we had a corner shop where you get your newspapers, like post office facility as well. And uh, you could get a few things like you, your basics, your bread, your milk and all this. Just a small corner shop. And I used to spend, I used to just pop down the road and used to spend my pocket money on sweets in there and get the newspapers. And uh, mother was happy for the newspaper and I was happy with a bag of sweets to come home maybe a bottle of pop um that's slang really for uh fizzy drink so uh, that's how villages were and we had a school actually within the village i went there there was post office there was a village hall where people could organize events and so on there is none of that there now in that um, there was actually a p public bar there as well, which was well financed by the the caravan site, which is there, it's still there. Uh, people would come, uh, tourism would come there, and you get to meet the same ones coming back a number of years, and get to meet some really interesting people as well. But the public bar is not run anymore because very rich, snobby, snobby top knobs who lived up on the top of the hill that <laughs> dictated how that should be ran yet they weren't regulars yeah yeah typical isn't it the heads are so far up their ass they're trying to find sunlight but uh nah. all they find is their own shit yeah and they think it don't stink and things suffer for it so yeah this is what these vlogs are they are for me to get uh, my rants out now and then um but i do want it more harnessed towards the efforts for exploratory mines a lot more the bmi stuff i've been with my bag I usually take this out with me with a laptop and if i find a quiet place somewhere something to eat i get on the laptop and search around and start to write and stuff down about stuff that I'm researching. So I had quite a write up in the uh, at the moment, writing stuff down. Brain machine interfaces. And you'll find the this, this I'll just read the first paragraph. You'll find this on a PDF at Neuralink. Uh the first bit is an abstract then they go into details. The abstract is that uh, brain machine interfaces hold a promise for the treatment of neurological disorders, but clinical BMIs, brain machine interfaces, have not yet been adopted in part because modest channel counts have limited the potential in this white paper. We describe 
Neuralink's first steps toward a scalable high bandwidth BMI system. So let me break that down. What I mean by higher bandwidth is transmission of information to the chip, to a wireless device. Like They're talking about things that you could get a computer to type out words for you just by thinking. And depending on who you are, it'd be like, 40 words per second on average. People think that's fast, but think how quickly you form words in your mind and then think how much slower speech is compared to that. Speech is limited in its speed, is, yeah, and how we process what we hear as well. Um, it's always a lot slower than a thought which is very annoying for most people and I find it annoying particularly because I don't always articulate my ideas that well and if I get interrupted which a lot of people seem to do these days interrupting each other trying to talk over each other if people shut the fuck up and listened to one another while they were talking a lot more they would learn also learn a lot more rather than trying to slap their defaulted idea on the world without first learning some other oppos opposing th thought process or a different perspective. Seriously, listen to people while they're talking, wait for them to shut up, and then talk. How hard can that be? But people just constantly, they just talk over each other a lot. I see that a lot. Um... Not all the time, and it's nice to have conversations with certain people in certain places who don't necessarily act like they they love the sound of their own voice. Um, certainly, some people are are the worst in being able to learn anything new are the most worse for blurting out 50 million words per second, if you like, as a metaphor, as a derogative, if you will. If you will. Um, Cause you know, they, they're just so hyper and they are blurt, they say, they say that out. And they, are, they haven't once listened to, they, they assume what the other person is saying and they just, they won't let them get a word in. I see this online a lot as well with, again, in previous videos I've talked about why the internet is a honeypot for socially dysfunctional people. And you see it where people who are bitching about other people and they have them on a live show and it's, it's like trying to educate a brick because I've seen it, people ranting, raging, and talking and they're on and they've been told they've been told you're on mute because you won't listen you won't let the the opposite the other person finish and they're trying to tell them they're on mute and then all you can see is lip sync you know you try and lip sync in and you think yeah he's probably saying some swear words here and there and all that and it was really really funny but it's sad as well um ranting and raging over and over and it takes them a whole minute five minutes in some cases before they realize they're on mute then they complain about being on mute when they were actually told they were going to be on muted if they didn't stop anyway it has, you're not going to learn anything if you unless you actually listen you didn't you know they're not learning that oh you're on mute now so, stop talking, sort of thing. Instead, they're willing to waste all that energy and time, just, you know. So, yeah, it's a pet hate, a really, really big pet hate with me. It's an issue with me because people really should talk with each other instead of at each other. So going back to BMI, brain machine interfaces after all this rant, 
Um, <laughs> I, I might really put the world to right sometimes. I try to. Uh, there's threads that come off the chip interface in into a brain and it sounds invasive but what I've been reading about it's not invasive at all is it something I would be willing to have done it sure I would um, but you know the, the, gathering the data on this is fascinating and there's, there's so much they're talking about the threads being less than like one tenth of the width of the human hair that go off the chip into the brain a little bit and because of the vasculature of the brain and the delicacy delicate um, areas it can be very dangerous for that to be like pushed in manually so it's done by a very precision device that is done by a robot to stitch this uh, the threads in because uh, one of the issues they found was like the threads need to be thin and flexible that is like the rest of the material of the brain already so it's not so invasive it's biologically acceptable that and you know it doesn't raise enough Im immune response to try and reject it that's one thing they had to overcome but they have, they have like a stiffener because they're trying to thread it to the into the material of the brain it'll bend and, and break or it'll bend and not get inserted it would be one of those problems so the stiffener would be from what I understand would be a fine micro needle that would place it through keeping it stiff and then releasing it in coming off um, amazing right and it picks up signals from the neurochemical the the chemical electrical signal from neurons nearby not directly but it'll be nearby and it picked that up and the idea is that to send a signal to something that's wearable behind the, your ear to pick up the data um, so this is not like these wires coming out of your head or anything, but this is the potential for this is phenomenal in that uh, be useful for people who are paralyzed. I said it in a previous video. You could sit into. They're going to do this. There's it's a no brain now. If it's not already done, at some point you're going to be able to sit into a framework exoskeletal frame if you're paralyzed. And you only just think, move, and you you're moving. Um, then there could be perhaps the chip giving the sensation, sparking the right electrical signal to the brain to give the sensation of movement anyway. So you need to, because that's all stuff that need to be considered as well. Because the processing of the brain for the sensation of the movement, where your body is in three D space might not be so well developed or might be atrophied if you are paralyzed um, the brain t typically makes up extra resources into other um, types of processing in order to compensate for the ones it's lost we see that with um, people, people who are blind they're hearing tends to be more sensitive or you know there's different things so off these threads as well the the thread itself is like a thread of threads with electrodes and nodes on which is different channels of processing for the chip as well which you know this is no pun intended this is mind-blowing stuff and studying the Neuralink program it seems like it's gone quiet for a while whether they scrapped it and come out with something different or not I don't know but it's just some information I want to share and put out there so 
you know, go to the Neuralink, I'll put the link below and have a look at that paper. Something I also want to rant about a little bit is um, people are really skilled at debating and showing why people are wrong about something. And there's a lot of people, channels, encouraging flat earthers to come on and debate and talk things through trying to keep it intelligent but it's never going to be intelligent on the flat earth side because it's not a it's an idea that has them they don't have ideas the idea has them it's a delusion delusions are the side effect of a deeper set of beliefs how about these people are really skilled at uh, debating people start to talk about their deeper heart beliefs as to why they think NASA lies all the time or what which other lies why and so on. Ignore the flat the, the side effect for a while and address those deeper things because you know there's always a another layer and I think you'll solve a lot more come to a lot more conclusions and break even break the, the delusion programming hopefully uh, would be the main goal because it ruins a lot of things look at Nathan Thompson recently been arrested uh, going to a school with leaflets and, and trying to teach children that the earth's flat is pathetic but you're always acting like it's a big conspiracy Every conspiracy has a set of beliefs that cause a side effect, which is another belief or delusion on its own. I guarantee that's how they work. Look at the guy, what was it, Mad, Mad Mike? There were people who were actually professional, like engineers and so on. There's no way they would think the world's flat but they worked with him supported him which is stupid to me they're perpetuating something that's really dangerous and they're encouraging him to just go up in a steam powered rocket but then you know he ended, ended up dying because of this foolishness we all knew he would I mean it's just a no brainer that's something the way he was going, that at some point he's gonna. One of the experiments is gonna go wrong. He's gonna come back, crashing back to the earth. And what happened happened, and I really hope that um, that uh, this can send a message that. This is really dangerous and really foolish, and you know my con condolences to the family. Nobody wants, uh, no matter how detrimental your thought processes are, nobody wants somebody to die because of what they're doing. But uh, why didn't they just stop him doing this? A steam-powered rocket with a, a homemade parachute. There's no professionalism in this. There's no, uh, and not, not enough finance to make it really, really safe anyway. Yeah, they carried on doing it anyway. Not telling people how they should live their life, but at least try and be safer about it so you can perpetuate your own journey. It wasn't really that safe. You know, this is why they called him Mad Mike. You know, it is a mad thing to do. Anyway, thanks for watching. Peace. I look forward to doing another video soon. Bye.